Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nigro with the Chem Calculations Screencast. This screencast is going to review light, electromagnetic radiation, and the three variables that we use to describe that radiation as it moves through space. Specifically, we're going to be looking at its frequency, its wavelength, and then the energy that that wave can carry. All right, so let's start by drawing a simple standing wave. Well, that's pretty good for me. All right, we're going to start by talking about the distance from peak to peak or the distance from trough to trough. They're going to be the same, right? And that's called the wavelength of that light. And we represent that with the symbol lambda. All right, for units, some sort of length unit, meters, most often nanometers. Nanometers because we tend to be focused on the visible region and the length there is the nanometer, All right? We also can talk about the number of waves that pass a certain point per unit of time. And we call this the frequency of that light, so frequency. All right, we represent that with a squiggly V. All right, the unit here is a little different. It's the number of waves per unit of time. So we use a per second for the unit, right? Which can be represented with S to the negative one or one over S, but most often we call this the Hertz, which is represented with HZ, right? So whenever you see that unit HZ, that's a frequency value and it's a per second, okay? Now, these two variables are related to each other through the speed at which that light is moving through space. Right now, it's very common for people to say that one wave moves faster than another, but that's not true because light, all light, moves at the same speed, that speed of light. Right? So the speed of light is a constant, and we call it C. And that's related to the frequency and the wavelength through this formula. So the speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency, all right? And that speed of light is a constant, which is three times 10 to the eight meters per second, all right? So just so we're clear, the speed of light is constant. So just because a wave has a high frequency does not also mean it's moving faster, all right? Just because a wave has a low frequency does not mean it's moving slower. They all move at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. What can vary is the wavelength and the frequency and then the energy of that light, all right? Now, let's talk about energy. All right, it was proposed by Max Planck that light is not actually a continuous wave. It's photons or packets of energy that are moving through space in this wave-like pattern. And he determined that the energy of those packets, those photons, is equal to a constant times the frequency of that wave-like pattern. All right, that constant is appropriately named Planck's constant and has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 and the unit is a joule times seconds, all right? So that means that the energy of light has units of joules, which we represent with the capital J, all right? So you can see that if we have Planck's constant at joules times seconds, we multiply it by frequency, which is a per second, the time units are gonna cancel and we're left with that joule, all right? But what if we don't know that frequency? Well, we can also relate the energy of that wave to the wavelength, all right? We can use our formula for the speed of light, solve it for frequency, we get speed of light over wavelength and plug that into our energy formula. And we end up with Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So either of these formulas can be used to calculate that energy of that radiation, all right? Now, let's talk a little bit about the relationships among these variables. 
All right, so we'll start with frequency and wavelength. So frequency and wavelength are inversely related or indirectly related. All right, as the wavelength gets longer, then the number of waves that pass a point is going to get smaller. So as the wavelength goes up, the frequency is going to go down. If we compress the wave and shorten a wavelength, then we're going to see more waves pass that point per unit of time. So we'll see an increase in the frequency. So we've got an inverse relationship between those two variables. All right, if we look at energy, energy and frequency are directly related. All right. As the number of waves passing a point increases, the energy of that wave increases, right? As the number of waves that pass per unit of time decrease, then the energy of that wave decreases. So there's a direct relationship between those two variables, All right? And then finally, energy and wavelength are also inversely related. All right. As the wave gets longer in terms of wavelength, its energy is going to go down and then vice versa. As that wave gets compressed and its wavelength decreases, the energy is going to go up. All right. So we think about the electromagnetic spectrum. All right. So let's pretend this is the spectrum. All right. So this is high frequency, low wavelength then, and this is low frequency, high wavelength then, right? All the way up here are gamma rays, all right? And these gamma rays are very unhealthy for humans because as the energy of the wave increases, so does its penetrating power. So what does that mean, penetrating power? It means what that wave is able to move through, all right? So if you have a gamma ray and you were exposed to that, that gamma ray can move through your skin, through your organs, through your bones, into your cells, and can disrupt your DNA, right? And get mutations, and that's where we get radiation sickness, which is very bad, all right? As you move from gamma rays down in terms of frequency, you come into contact with types of radiation that, while penetrating, aren't quite as bad. So x-rays, that can penetrate your skin and your organs, but not your bones, all right? So that's what allows us to visualize the inside, our skeletal structure, all right? You can move down even further to UV rays. We know that those can penetrate our skin and give us sunburns, but they don't really go too much further unless you get overexposed. And then the visible region doesn't really penetrate at all. And then as we move further and further down, right, we end up at the end at radio waves, all right? These are very low energy waves. They have very long wavelengths. They've got a lot of traveling power, all right? But they can't really do too much to us in terms of penetration or injuring us, which is great because we like the radio, right? All right, so when we talk about energy, that's what's important to keep in mind is the higher the energy, the more likely it is to be able to penetrate things. All right, so let's try a couple problems. These problems are going to be a little bit different than what we dealt with in terms of dimensional analysis because these are going to be formula-driven problems. So I call these algebraic problems or algebraic problem solving where you're going to need to use a formula manipulate it to solve for the unknown. So as part of that process, I like to list out what I've been given and what I'm looking for, and then any other information that I need. All right, so this first problem says, what is the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation with the frequency of six times 10 to the ninth hertz that nine should be up? All right, so let's start with what we know. We know the frequency, 6.00 times 10 to the ninth hertz. All right, we're asked for the wavelength, all right? And I know that, that those two variables are related to each other through the speed of light. So that's three times 10 to the eight meters per second, all right? So I have these two variables, I have my one unknown. So I take my formula, speed of light equals wavelength times frequency, rearrange that to my unknown, and I see that the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. So now I'm going to plug in my values for the speed of light. And for my frequency, 
and remember that hertz is the same thing as a per second so that's going to cancel the per second in my speed of light and i'm going to be left with the meter so this is 0 0.0500 meters all right so if i have a frequency of 6 times 10 to the ninth hertz then that wavelength must be 0 0.05 meters all right what is the frequency of light from a laser that emits light with a wavelength of 840 nanometers? All right, so this time I've been given a wavelength at 840 nanometers. I'm looking for the frequency. And again, I know that those two are related through the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, now here's something to watch out for. That speed of light is in meters per second. But I've been given that wavelength in nanometers. So before I can use my formula, I have to convert those nanometers into meters. So 840 nanometers, set up my conversion factor. Nanometers will go on the bottom. Meters will go up top. And I know from my metric unit equalities that one meter is 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So I do my division, end up with 8.4 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. All right, now that unit I can put in to my formula. All right, I know the speed of light is fully linked times frequency, which means that the frequency of light must be equal to the speed of light divided by that wavelength. So 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 8.4 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. It's going to let the meters cancel. I'll be left with a per second. My frequency is 1.32 times 10 to the ninth hertz, or per seconds. All right, actually, I should really keep this 1.3, just to keep my digits correct. Okay, so that's going back and forth between wavelength and frequency. All right, these next two problems are going to have energy involved. All right, so what is the frequency of a photon of electromagnetic radiation with an energy of 8.75 times 10 to the negative 25th joules. All right, so I've been given energy, 8.75 to the negative 25th joules. All right, I'm asked to find wavelength, and I know that that formula includes its own constant, Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. All right, so I look at my units, I'm okay. I just need to rearrange my formula. So energy is Planck's constant times the frequency, which means frequency must be in, oops, yep, energy divided by Planck's constant. All right, so I'm going to plug in what I've got, 8.75 times 10 to the negative 25th joules divided by 6.626, 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. All right, so those joules are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with a per second, which is the unit for frequency. And I get 1.3, oh, I see what I did, times 10 to the ninth hertz. And I know this is shocking for you guys, but I work these problems ahead of time, so I don't make mistakes, and I just realized I made a mistake. All right, if you look at number two, it looks like I used the answer for number three with number two. All right, we'll go back to that in just a second. All right, so you can see that even though that energy value seems really, really small, right, that this wave still has a very high frequency. I mean, 1.32 times 10 to the ninth. So that's 1 billion waves are moving past a point in space per second. All right, so, all right, let's go back up to this top one. All right, so the frequency here should be, if I had put in the correct number, 3.6 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, so you can see a very small wavelength, 8.4 times 10 to the negative seventh, but a very high frequency. All right, so last problem. In a flame test experiment, one of the chemicals emitted light with a wavelength of 720 nanometers. What is the energy of a photon of this light? All right, and that's the other thing to keep in mind. The problem above, it looked like a very small amount of energy, but that is for a single photon, right? And there are lots of photons moving in this wave-like pattern. All right, so let's see what we know. 
All right, we've got a wavelength of 720 nanometers. All right, we're asked for the energy, and we know that that's related through two constants. We're going to need Planck's constant, and we're going to need the speed of light. Meters per second. All right, so again, we check our units. And we see while we have meters here, we have nanometers for that wavelength. So we're going to have to do that conversion first. So 720 nanometers. Nanometers in the bottom of my conversion factor, meters up top. And one meter is 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So we end up with 7.2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. All right, so for our formula, energy is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over that wavelength. All right, so we plug everything in. 6 to, oops, 626 six, times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second all over... 7.2 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. All right, so if we look, the second and the per second are going to cancel the meter, and the meter are going to cancel, and we're going to be left with units of joules, which is what we would expect for energy. All right, we plug all that in, watch our scientific notation, and we end up with 2.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. All right, now again, that seems like such a small amount of energy that you know, why would that ever help? It's because it's a single photon, and there are billions, billions, sextillions, quadrillions of photons moving, all right? So all that energy adds up, okay? All right, so hopefully you have a good understanding of what wavelength, frequency, and energy are in terms of electromagnetic radiation, the formulas that we can use to solve for those, and then those relationships.